Hi everyone, this is Dr. Shanmuga Priya, a prep ladder faculty for biochemistry. Uh, if you have been a student who has been looking for ways or best practices that need to be followed to create an effective notes for yourself in medical curriculum, then watch this video till the end because in this video, I'm going to give you answers for many of the questions that have been boggling your mind so far related to notes taking. Because I'm very sure that most of you must have asked yourself this question, should I take notes? If yes, then why should I take notes? And if I have to take notes, how do I take notes? And how do I effectively use that notes? To answer your first question, should I take notes? I would say I'm the best person to answer this question because I have first-hand experience in getting into a trouble for not having taken notes till then. The answer is a big yes. Answer is a big yes. Why do you have to take notes? It is because of the enormity of medical curriculum. Yeah, it's not going to be practically possible for any human being to revise everything straight from the textbook. Yeah, if you have read OG for say 20 days, you have done the first revision for 20 days and then you want to revise it again. If you try to revise it from the textbook, maximally what you might be able to do is you can reduce the 20 days to 15 days. But for second revision, totally you might be able to give only 20 days, right? In that 20 days, if you take 15 days just for OG, do you think it's going to be possible for you to finish all 19 subjects? No. So because of the enormity of the medical curriculum, you need an invincible tool. And what would that be? That would be notes. Okay, that's one advantage of you writing notes. The second advantage is once you start writing a comprehensive note, you'll be able to create a mind map for yourself. Yeah, when you read the textbook, more than what you would understand when you read the textbook for the first time, when you start writing notes for yourself, you will be able to connect multiple dots. So writing notes will help you in creating a mind map. And the third is more interesting. It will help you to establish picture memory. How many of you remember an incident during exam? Yeah, when you're asked a question, you would have a picture memory of uh, your handwriting. Yeah, the colors that you had used for writing those notes. Where was it in the notes, right? So that picture memory would help you in retrieving the information. So that's a third advantage. And the fourth advantage is it can be used as a quick reference. For example, in your final year, you're reading medicine. In medicine, you're learning about something called as torsidus d pointus. And in causes of torsidus d pointus, they've given you long QT syndrome. And then they've mentioned class 3 anti-arrhythmic drugs. The moment you see class 3 anti-arrhythmic drugs, you become more curious to know why will this result in torsidus d pointus, for which you have to take your pharmacology book, try to read the mechanism of action. Of course, all that information will be there in the textbook but you know textbook every fact every concept runs through pages for you to read everything comprehend everything to understand why will that result in long QT syndrome why will that result in torsidus d pointus is going to take forever right instead if you have your own written notes in pharmacology where you have explained what happens these drugs cause opening of potassium channels that causes an increase in something called as vulnerable period and because of the increase in vulnerable period it sets up something called as torsidus d pointus then it can be used as a quick reference right so these are the advantages of writing notes so that's about why now, how do you make notes? Yeah, that's what you're all worried about, right? So if you're a NEET or a next aspirant, you know that you have to target 19 subjects. Whereas if you're a first year student or a second year MBBS student or a third year MBBS student, depending upon which university exam you're going to appear for, you will have a discrete or clear cut number of subjects that you're going to learn. But apart from that, please don't fail to have something called this Ready Reckoner Notebook. I'll tell you about this ready reckoner in a short while. For now, let me tell you how to write notes for these 19 subjects. So the first question that would have arised in your mind is, okay, I'm writing notes. Should it be a running notes or is it going to be a comprehensive notes? I am strongly against taking running notes. What do I mean by running notes? As and when the teacher teaches you or as and when you're watching something as a video, yeah, you're taking down notes. For example, if I say that glute transporters belong to facilitated passive diffusion mechanism, immediately you start writing glute transporters facilitated passive diffusion. And then sodium, potassium, ATP is primary active transport. So that's called as running uh, notes. 
and I'm strongly against you people taking running notes because we are in an era of information. Yeah, information overloaded generation we all belong to. So there is no dearth for the information. So it's all about how you understand that information, how you comprehend that information, how you are able to put it into use for which you should be able to conceptually understand the topic and that is going to be missed if you run notes, if you write notes during the lecture. So whenever you're listening to a lecture, concentrate on what is the information that the educator or the teacher is trying to convey to you. Don't waste your time writing down running notes, okay? And to write comprehensive notes in any of the notes that you're going to take, there are two features that you should ensure that your notes has got. Okay, so the two features would be number one is index. In every notes, there should be an index and page number. Okay, and both should be linked. Isn't that obvious? Yeah, for example, if you're writing notes in uh, notes for anatomy, yeah, upper limb notes. So you should say brachial plexus. So page number three to page number five is about brachial plexus. So that index should be there in your notes. So that when you see a PYQ, previous year question or a grand test question, which was asked about brachial plexus, you should be able to quickly retrieve those pages. Take your anatomy notes, look at the index. It says page three to page five. So you go to page three, read about it, revise it, try to see if you're able to answer the MCQ, okay? Point number two is notes taking is a skill that you will develop in due course. You should understand that all your MCQs or all your questions will be framed in such a way that they try to check if you understand the very minute differences between closely resembling conditions, right? For example, they try to find out if you know clearly the differences between homocystinuria and Marfan syndrome. So you learn about homocystinuria, you learn about Marfan syndrome. When you write notes, it should not be like paragraph for Marfan syndrome and a paragraph for homocystinuria. There should be a tabular column. So write or draw as many tabular columns as possible, comparing and contrasting between closely resembling conditions. Okay, that will help you in due course. Okay, and then draw as many flow charts as possible that will help you in understanding concepts clearly later on. And for every topic, there should be points to remember. Once you're done writing down the notes, condense everything into points to remember. And after points to remember, you leave three pages blank. Why do you have to have three blank pages? Because when you read PYQs or when you're writing a grant test, you're coming across an MCQ based on which you've already taken notes. Okay, what will you do? You go to that notes, write down that PYQ. Okay, so check if you're able to answer it. Once you have answered it, go note it down in the notes. So that five days before the exam, when you take your notes, when you start revising, you don't have to go and work out PYQ separately. Once the topic is done, you will, like a cycle, you'll go through PYQs, you'll go through grant test question paper. So the entire topic is done. Okay, so that is how I would want you to take notes. Okay, so this is about taking a comprehensive note for all the 19 subjects. Now, what about the Ready Reckoner Notebook? What is a Ready Reckoner Notebook? It is nothing but a compilation of flashcards, which are based on the various facts that you learn during your preparation phase. Okay, for example, a Ready Reckoner Notebook, again, will have an index, will have page numbers. And then the first uh, few pages can be left for chromosome numbers. Okay, so what will you do in these pages? You can devote like three to five pages for every topic. For chromosome numbers, suppose you're learning about, um, say, Prader-Willi syndrome or Angel Man syndrome. You know, Prader-Willi syndrome is caused by micro deletion involving chromosome 15. So you're writing it down, Prader-Willi syndrome, chromosome 15. And then you're learning about another disorder, say Marfan syndrome, right? Marfan syndrome is also chromosome 15. So again, writing down Marfan syndrome, chromosome 15. And then you're learning about some other disease, Down syndrome, chromosome 21. So you keep writing down all these chromosome numbers and the relevant disorders. So that the day before exam, yeah, I said five days before exam, you start the complete revision. But the day before exam should be devoted for you to read only the Ready Reckoner notebook. Okay, when you're going to go through all these numbers, all these facts, how much ever you read, how many ever times you memorize something, these numbers will fail you if you don't revise the day before. 
okay so that should be in the ready reckoner notebook so example is chromosome numbers but apart from that hla susceptibility right that can be given two pages after hla susceptibility you can have rda values recommended daily allowance values and then inheritance what are the disorders which are autosomal recessively inherited disorders which are autosomal dominantly inherited x-linked recessive x-linked dominant so for all these you can have a list the, the day before exam you revise it get it right okay so apart from inheritance most common so most common cancer in men most common cancer in women most common cancer cancer in men in india in the world right most common complication most common symptom yeah so for most common you can have few pages drugs of choice you can have few pages so this is how you have to frame your ready reckoner notebook you don't have to have a clear cut idea when you start writing it as and when you come across a fact if you think that there are so many facts under this category open that category start building the list okay so that's about having the ready reckoner notebook now you have two doubts i'm very sure when you say i have to take notes do you think this notes has to be a pen and paper notes wherein i humanely write it or should it be an app based notes i would say that's your personal choice if you think your handwriting is good when i say good it need not be beautiful if you think your handwriting is legible and if you think you will be able to rely on it to revise a few days before your exam then please go ahead writing it down okay and when you write down of course you have to be very meticulous using multiple colors and then uh, again i am I'm, i'm not a person who's like so meticulous about it i just write notes and then i revise it so it's all your personal choice okay or if you think your handwriting is not legible and if you think you are a tech savvy person you don't have to be actually a tech savvy person to start using an app so the advantage or the goodness of all these apps is initially they might not be endearing but once you start using it you will get used to it okay so don't get when scared of all these apps start using these apps okay so if you think if you have decided to use app then uh, i know microsoft one notes is uh, hands down is the winner yeah so uh, that's my personal choice microsoft microsoft one note or if you are an apple person you can use apple notes so there are many choices okay and i can also vouch for flash cards anki's flash cards you can use yeah you can write down notes and at the same time you can also create anki's flash cards the advantage of using these anki's flash cards is wherever you go it will be with you you don't have to carry a physical notebook along with you so if you have these flash cards i know most of you the moment you wake up you take your mobile check something right so if you have these anki's flash cards instead of checking instagram reels you can open these flash cards try to check how much of memory you have retained okay and the next question in your mind is should it be a self made note or should it be a ready made notes i would say that should be a hybrid between the two self made or ready made notes because in market there are so many resources which are available so if you think that there is a resource which is ready made which you can relate to yeah exactly what you want is available then you can go ahead using those ready made notes but in those ready made notes ensure that you have your own handwriting there add more points add more pyqs add more gt mcqs okay so preplada has got a comprehensive notes that is made ready for all its subscribers i have personally experienced using these comprehensive notes and you can definitely use these notes uh, primarily because for every topic they have image based questions they have case based questions and there will be a summary exactly like what i told you initially there will be an objective and then all these uh, must know facts must know concepts are explained and uh, put forth in a way that it is very catchy okay and at the end of this uh, and at the end of every topic they have also given adequate space adequate space for you to write down additional facts and concepts so whenever you write a grant us if you see an mcq based on that topic there is of course an index there are of course page numbers you can go write down those grant us mcqs so this way you will be able to save your time and at the same time you will be able to have a ready reckoner in hand okay so i recommend preplada comprehensive notes which you can use okay so to summarize yes you will have to take notes because it's going to help you in revising and recalling all the information and 5 days before your exam how much ever you have completed till then start revising using your notes 
and these notes should be based on all these 19 subjects and the day before use your ready recolor notebook every one of you should have a ready recolor notebook which is designed according to your own needs okay so that's all for this topic and do not forget to subscribe to our channel because we'll be releasing out so many topics and so many concepts that will be of use to all me pg and next pg aspirants thank you subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from prep ladder